Hi guys, welcome back to the RC store and my name's Zamo. Guys, in this video, we're gonna be checking out this beast. Guys, first of all, I wanna say a huge thank you to HPI for sending me this. Um, I'm actually quite looking forward to this. Now, this is the Venture Wayfinder by HPI. Now, there is a Mark One version of this, which was a kit format. However, this is a revised RTR edition. They've changed a few bits on this and made it even better. So guys, we're just gonna go through the box art and see what's what, and then we'll open it and see what's different. So first of all, you can see on the box, it's two different colors. So you can get it in this beautiful gray, or you can get it in a nice metallic orange. Obviously, choice is yours. Um, I believe we've got the gray. So I'm looking forward to unboxing this. It has got a um, few extras than the Mark I, like I said. So from what I can see on the box here, it's got heavy duty aluminum diff covers. Um, the actual shock mounts that go on the axles of metal. Um, you've got durate suspension. Also, one thing they include with this is the relocation kit for the battery. Now you can distribute the weight, whether you want it in lower center of gravity, you want it over the rear, or you want it over the front, which makes um, the vehicle balanced however you like, which I think is absolutely fantastic. It is 3S compatible. This particular vehicle is RTR, uh, comes with everything you require, and it's also fully waterproof, guys. Now, I did ask the lads at HPI, when you say fully waterproof, do you mean I can submerge this? And they said, Ammo, it's fully waterproof. So we will put that through to the test on our running video. So guys, first of all, looking at the box art, available in two different colors. You can get it in a metallic orange, as you can probably see at the front there, the front half. Um, also, you can get it in a nice metallic gray, which you can obviously see at the front there as well. There's half of it in metallic gray. I believe this is the gray. So if you want to see any specs, I'll go through the box art, guys. Um, there's some chassis information and specs just there. Um, I will zoom in for you just there so you can see it. You can pause the screen if you wish to read that. Um, but I won't bore you too much reading all that out. The box itself, very, very nice. Um, HPR Tradition, they do a really, really good job on the packaging, guys. Um, full four-wheel drive. This doesn't have, um, I believe, you can't change the diff locks, whether you want them open diff or lock diff, they're permanently locked. This rig is basically catered towards those that want to do rock crawling. Um, however, with a vehicle and not a competition sort of rig that looks like an MOA, uh, very buggy looking type, if you want a proper rock crawler that looks like a scale vehicle, this is the one. So guys, without further ado, I am going to unbox this. Right. Right, what I'll do guys, I'll take everything out of the box, I'll lay it on the table and we'll go through everything. So just showing you guys the weight configurations. So if you place your battery up at the front, it's 56% towards the front, 44% towards the rear. If you put it in the center, it's 53% towards the front, 47% towards the rear. And if you put it in the rear, it's 50-50. So there's your balance ratio, guys. And this, all the parts for this, sorry, come all in the box in order for you to set up however you wish. So guys, first thing first, the manual. Um, it comes with a manual, as all HPI vehicles do. I'll just show you guys very quickly what you get in here. So you get my, uh, join my HPI free today, which is, I believe it's an app you can connect with HPI. It's a warranty registration card as well. Um, so that comes in there. You get your guarantee. and the manual so the manual is quite thick to be fair um, i'm guessing that's because it's based in a couple of different languages um, just going through it very very quickly 
you've got your quick startup guide shows you basically how to charge it and so forth and everything that comes in the box you also get in here um, you do's and you don't as you probably already know tells you how to set up your controller and then you've also I believe got exploded diagrams which you have so they got some very detailed ones to be fair I'll just show you guys so you've got exploded diagrams there with reference numbers and there um, they basically show you every individual part of the vehicle which allows you to obviously if you break something and you want to replace it it allows you to replace it it also shows you how to fill your shocks with shock oil what oil to use and so forth as well um, so yeah it's quite handy this is show you how to use a transmitter and once again it's explained in multiple languages so I'll pop that to the side what else do we get in here right we get a pack here in this pack it comes with a numerous amount of spares so from here already I can see the slider drive shaft so the slider prop shaft should I say you get a spare one of those you get loads of like shock ends etc so loads and loads of spares in here guys um yeah and also you get um this battery tray now this battery tray allows you to relocate the battery in different positions whether you want to put it towards the back middle or front um yes i will put details on the screen here now showing you guys uh, where you can put the configurations and the weight distributions as well um, also you get a um, pack of four AA alkan batteries obviously these are for the controller you can never have enough batteries eh? <laughs> right you also got a mains charger with the tamiya style plug it does have interchangeable socket on the end for the us market european market um, uk market and so forth so that's quite handy so if you want to take this and you want to go abroad take this charger with you you've got no issues whatsoever <laughs> little brown box and you in here you get a plasma nickel metal hydrate battery it's 2000 milliamp 7.2 volts so like i said this is an rtr vehicle comes with everything you need um so you've got that all to a side and your transmitter get this open don't need that wow wow <laughs> right guys this is quite a large transmitter you get um, pistol type trigger type whatever you want to call it uh, but it's quite large um, normally you would find i don't know if you can pick this up your steering adjustment would normally be here the wheel normally sits back here on this it sits quite far out uh, however it does feel rather nice it's got a nice foam grip to it i like that and also they give you enough space just under there to stick your thumb underneath <laughs> so it fits perfectly um, in terms of the trigger trigger feels nice it has got your antenna at the top there that flicks up and down you do have um i believe your yeah your dual rates just there for your steering your throttle and you have your steering adjustment as well so your trim setting you got a bind button and a channel three there as well bear with me guys the first time i'm looking at this um just like everything on the channel i i literally hold out and wait till i film it to show you guys and it's the first time i'm seeing the product as well so bear with me so i'm finding my way around it and um, you can also adjust the end points on the steering uh, steering servo um but you can do that just here so i'm guessing you put a little screwdriver in and you can adjust them so they've done it so that you once it's set it's set you don't mess around with it or by mistake knock it etc which is quite handy to be fair can be a pain to start obviously first time round but once you've got everything set up it's set 
Also, rather unusual place. You've got your uh, reverse switches. So your throttle reverse, steering reverse, and channel three reverse. And they're on the end there. So that's a unique place, not really seen that before. Um, in terms of batteries, like I said, it takes four AA batteries. And they sit just there. Amples of room, guys. All right, let's put this to a side. Make some space. And let's open this beast. Looking forward to this. I think it looks fantastic. Just the colours. I don't know if the camera can pick it up. They look so realistic in terms of how a car's painted. Um, I'm guessing because it's a metallic paint job. Um, it looks fantastic, guys. First thing first, I always do with something like this, is check the articulation. And guys, it seems like it's got quite a bit, to be fair. Um, let me see if I've got something here just to prop underneath it. So guys, I've got these steps. You've probably seen me use these on some of my crawlers um, that you can see up here. Um, but yeah, it just gives you an indication of how much flex it's actually got. And all three tires are on the ground. I'm just gonna try and lift it up a bit more to see if it's got any more. Yeah, still on the ground. And there's just the lift just there. So guys, from factory, it's got quite a bit of articulation. Now the shocks, you can adjust them and you can adjust the points on them. So you can bring them in, allowing a bit more flexibility if you wish. However, this is bone stock and yeah, it's um, got some flex there guys. Let's check the back end out. So that's the rear. Once again, no rubbing whatsoever around here. Front wheel doesn't catch. Um, we'll just try and turn it. No, completely misses. Ah, if I put it, if I turn this way, it does catch the body on this sort of articulation. Um, however, in terms of lift, it's still got a bit more in it. It's got about there, and then this front wheel will lift. That's quite a lot of articulation, guys. Um, I can show you from the rear end as well. Just gives you guys a better idea. So that's that there. And then if I lift that a bit more, and that wheel's just lifted. That's a lot of articulation. Um, I'm more than happy with that, guys. Absolutely fantastic. Another thing I've noticed, it's got um, three links up front, four links up at the back, as you can see underneath. It's got a panod there. Normally with vehicles that have got panods, you'll find that the lift on one side is greater than the other. However, what I have just seen is, look at that there, right? All three wheels are on the ground. Now, if I flip that onto the other side, it shouldn't lift as much technically because of the panel. Guys, all three wheels are on the ground and it's still got that extra lift there. That just shows there was some thinking that's gone behind this. Um, absolutely wicked that is. Uh, pop that to the side. Right, in terms of the vehicle itself, it has got some details already on there. You've got your roof rack, so you can strap all your bits on there if you want to be cool. Um, you can also, I believe, remove the roof rack as well. It's not a licensed body, so it's just a generic body on there, but it still looks very, very nice. Nice front bumper with a ball bar. You do have some toe points there and there, and I believe it's the same on the rear. Yes, it is, so you've got two on the back there. And there, you've got a spare wheel, which isn't a dummy wheel, it's actually a functioning wheel, so you can use that. And I believe they've made it that scale that you can pop this pin out, you can lift this up, and you can open it like a tailgate. Look, look at that. That's absolutely amazing. <laughs> Great detail work there um, from HPI. Now, let's take the shell off and let's have a look inside. Wow, that looks very well balanced from my point of view straight away. Now, looking at this, the chassis rails 
are like, yeah, nice. It's low, it's flat, it's just what you want. They've put the battery in the center location. So that basically puts a uh, majority of your weight is your battery and it's really, really low down. Uh, so the center of gravity is right at the bottom, the weight's at the bottom, which helps it not to topple over climbing rocks. However, you can adjust that and you can put it up at the back if you wish, or you can take that and you can put it right at the front. Now, guys, if you've seen our crawling videos, you guys probably already know, we do some crazy crawling. Uh, we don't go over your usual rocks. We go over some steep rocks and we like to test these rigs. Now, going up steep rocks where the climb is like that, um, you want all the weight up front. Simple reason being, so the front end's got all the weight on it. It's pushing itself and pulling its weight up. However, if you've got the weight on the back, what you'll find is the rig will get to a certain point, the front wheels will start lifting and it'll flip backwards. Center is pretty good as well. So you've got an option there, uh, but I think we'll probably move it towards the front. Uh, also, I was gonna say to you guys is the adjustments here. So remember I was saying you can adjust the suspension. You've got three different points you can put it in. You've got that one, that one, or that one. So you can adjust it there and on the front as well. So you can move it back if you want it to twist and articulate a bit more. You have got um, your metal links, like I said, where the RTR original version didn't have metal links, I believe. Um, so this has got all nice new metal links, which is a great touch once again. Your aluminium diff housing, just there you can see. And at the start of the video, I was mentioning the mounts for the shockers are aluminium as well. Um, you can probably just see them there and there. And then it's same again on the rear. Um, if you can see them there, so you've got your diff housing and then the bottom of the shocks there and there are all metal and aluminium. The axles look fantastic, really thick and solid. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Um, you've got your motor, which is a 35 turn motor, just there at the top there. You can see that. You've got your steering servo, which is placed once again. It's not on the axle, it's up above, uh, hence you've got the panard. However, like I said, for some reason, this articulates amazing. Look at that. And then on this side, the same. It articulates exactly the same on both sides, which is fantastic. Dual stage shocks. Um, with the dual stage shocks, the way these guys have done it, they've got the smaller spring at the top, um, and then you've got your larger spring. What that helps to do is when the car's sitting, the springs at the top take most of the car weight, so the car sits slightly lower. And then when you're falling into rock holes, it allows the back to droop into them. And when the back droops like so, it keeps the four wheels on the ground, allowing more traction. Uh, you've probably seen the FTX video uh, where we've done the FTX Gladius and I put some Desert Lizards. And that's a two-stage setup and that's set up for droop. So literally it falls into the holes and climbs perfectly. Guys, these guys already thought of that and it's already done from factory, so that's amazing. You, like I said, it's um, total four wheel drive and the diffs are completely locked. It hasn't got a two speed gearbox or anything like that. It's literally a crawler rig and it looks fantastic. So guys, let's do a few close ups just to show you guys within more detail. So you got front CVDs just there, absolutely fantastic. You can see all the aluminium parts that they have put onto this rig, absolutely amazing. Even the links up here are all metal, very, very nice. The dual stage shocks just there. The 35 turn motor that we spoke about. And over here, have a look at the chassis on how well it's made absolutely fantastic really looking forward to taking this rig out guys your center diff just there and the rear once again you can see all the metal that they've used compared to the original your dual stage shocks on the rear, 
your adjustment point and over the back absolutely amazing the tires themselves ain't bead locks they are just standard glued tires 1.9s however i may be upgrading these to some bead locks uh, bead lock wheels and some nice tires however i'm not going to rule these out i'm going to give it a blast on these first and see how capable it is right guys let's put some batteries in it and let's see how this thing moves so guys the batteries are all connected let's see what this is like um so it's the first time i'm having a go nice okay it's a little bit quick let's take our time with it let's see if i can crawl over this here yeah look at that guys no issues whatsoever articulation's perfect um, but yeah, really, really nice. I have not um, mounted uh, the steps down with anything. So just bear with me on that. There's no portal axles on this, guys, by the way. And I don't believe it needs it. Fantastic. Done that like a champ. Let's have a look on the way back. It is a bit jerky, I won't lie. Um, that's obviously because of the motor. But once you get the hang of the trigger, it's quite controllable. Nice. And it's going over my arm as well. <laughs> but yes, look, there you go, guys. Fantastic. So in terms of moving, um, it moves reasonable. Just how you'd want. Nice and slow. Nice modulation there. It's only got sometimes, I think, when you've reversed. No, it's fine there. I thought it jerked a little bit, but it doesn't. It's Obviously, I'm not used to this uh, trigger. Uh, but look at that. Real, real nice modulation there, guys. Very, very controlled. Nice. Look at that. And this is what you want out of a crawler. Something that crawls. But I'm guessing it moves if you need it to move. If you want to use it for trails, I believe you can use it for trails. It's not intended as a trail rig, but it will move for trails. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> so guys, there you have it, the Wayfinder. Guys, put your comments below. Let me know what you think. This... I'm looking forward to taking on some epic rocks. You've seen us with the FTX, what we've done. You've seen the SCX6, which is down here. This thing is an animal. And um, yeah, absolutely love what that can do. So looking forward to see what this can achieve. And like they said, this is waterproof. So guys, we're going to make sure it is waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> if you love this content guys please feel free to like share and subscribe don't forget to smash that notification button and we'll see you in the next one thank you for watching <laughs>